Welcome to the F1 2024 Dutch Grand Prix reaction. I'm Sagan, and today I'm unfortunately alone recording this video. Um, yeah, this time AJ just couldn't manage to make it, but I'll think I'll manage it myself. Just alright. Okay, the Grand Prix, uh, the first race after the summer break, obviously. We got to the, the weekend expecting the, to be a very close fight. Obviously, uh, Mercedes won the three out of, out of four last races before, obviously, this Grand Prix. McLaren always, stra always strong on every single track, pretty much. Red Bull still in the hunt with Max. And Ferrari's looking interestingly quick in Spa, uh, despite their recent struggles before that. Uh, for this race, we expected them to be up there as well. Well, um, the first two, well, oh, Friday obviously was very wet. Uh, we had, we didn't have much talked about there. FP3 as well um, was, well, a, there was a lot of rain, obviously, low in start and crash in the rain, which ultimately uh, led to a certain decision that we'll talk about. I'll talk about it in the setup in the second recording, obviously, and yeah, that's pretty much for practice. There was no, no much, not many expectations. We didn't know what exactly are we gonna see or gonna witness, and yeah, that was kind of exciting because yeah, we we had a lot of wet running, but not much dry. The the teams didn't have much data, so we got to the qualifying, which started off with. Um, I actually forgot. Yeah. Um, at least the sergeant didn't uh didn't participate in qualifying. Uh, then we had I think both Saubers out in Q one as well, and we had also um one of the we had Daniel Ricardo in fifth and sixteenth. I think uh, I don't remember who was the last one. <laughs> Probably someone not. Not very uh, memorable <laughs> at this point. Yeah, Q1 wasn't that interesting. Um, but yeah, we got into Q2, which was much more interesting. We had uh, two sharp Q2 exits with Sainz and Hamilton there. Um, both teams showing uh, quite a bit of a lag of in qualifying pace compared to the, the other, other two top teams, uh, especially McLaren. Um, those guys seemed very quick at that point. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, they didn't quite make it into Q3. Uh, in Q2, also the two exits where I think Sonoda, so Ocon was out in Q1, so that was the one I missed, and the two Hasses, Volker and Magnussen. In Q3, um, I personally expected it to be very close based on my predictions as well, but unfortunately, it quite wasn't. Um, Lando absolutely destroyed the competition, uh, had a very good lab and put it on pole. Max was nowhere near him in the in second place in the Red Bull, and then we had I think Oscar Piastri half a second behind Norris. Uh, that it was not the greatest weekend for Oscar, um, qualifying as well. Uh, well, starting qualifying it was really not looking very good for Oscar in terms of pace compared to Norris. Um, and we had I think George Russell in P four uh, quite far behind Lando as well. Uh, to what we saw from Mercedes in the last few weekends, and uh, Charles Leclerc, I think, P5, or was it Perez? Um, I think it was very close. Well, I think it was just Perez and P5. We had uh, recently had Charles there as well, the two Aston Martins, uh, Albert and Gasly. So that was, that was Q3. Um, I didn't specify the order of those guys, I <laughs> couldn't quite remember. I, I just, I think, I, I remember. The Astons being uh, ahead of those two guys in Albans, so that was the P7, P8 for, for the Astons, Alonso ahead of Stroll, I think. And we had, I think, Albans in P9 and Gasly in P10, uh, which ultimately led uh, to Album being disqualified for, uh, well, his floor, I think, wasn't quite um, along with the regulations, and unfortunately, was disqualified. That was later fixed uh, for the race, but yeah, we had Williams last row on the grid with, uh, well, one driver being disqualified, the other didn't, didn't, didn't take place in qualifying, and uh, funnily enough, Sergeant 
actually out qualified album thanks to this with some uh, uh some beer statistics if you count it um okay that was it for qualifying the I think you kind of expected uh, the defender to be very strong, but I actually, actually expected Max to win this one. And when he overtook Lando to turn one, uh, the easiest overtake into lap, into turn one, lap one, uh, like one of the easiest I've ever seen, uh, probably. Uh, Lando had a really bad start. To be fair, Oscar had one, a bad one as well. And yeah, both McLaren just dropped the place. Um, he had. I think what was it? Uh, George Russell in B3 and Charles Leclerc actually overtook Perez for P5. Then uh, Gasly jumped both Aston Martins with some brilliant moves. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the start. The, 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 nothing really much happened. There were some battles up and down the grid. Oh, then we had, after like 15, 16, 18 laps, not quite remember the, the number. Lando caught up with Max, tried a couple of overtaking attempts uh, down the down the final straight with DRS. Finally, overtook him, I think, on lap 18. And after that, he didn't look back. Lando just cruised onto a very dominant victory over Max, who kept it in P2 despite a lack of pace compared to especially Lando. I think McLaren overall. I think Piastri was generally just significantly slower than Lando is for in, in this weekend, so that's probably why he couldn't manage to overtake Charles and Max for P2, but still a good chunk of points for McLaren. Anyway, um, yeah, okay. Let's go to, to the predictions, as I totally completely forgot about. Um, pole position was not Max Verstappen, then P2 was P2 was Max Verstappen, so no points here either. P3 was PS3, no points. Uh, P4 was, I believe, George, so no points here as well. And P5 was Perez, if I remember correctly, and uh, no points here either. P1 for the Grand Prix, Alana Norris ahead of Max Verstappen, so double points uh, for the top two for AGX. And only one point for me. And yeah, so uh, two to one lead already for HX. A B3 was not Oscar Piastri. Well, luckily for me, it was Charles Leclerc. <laughs> I ever him in the top four in qualifying, but not in the top five in the race, probably my mistake. I should have believed in Ferrari a little bit more. No points here. Uh, B4. In the end, was Oscar Piastri, so points here. And B5 was B. Wait, B4 was Piastri, and B5 was then Carl Sainz, who made his way from P11, I think, on the grid. So good, good performance there from uh, Carl Sainz, who overtook Perez uh, on the outside. <laughs> that, was a, that was a pretty interesting move. Um, yeah, okay, um, no points here. 2-2-1 two, 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 lead for Ajax after the first few segments. Fastest lap was uh, was obtained by Lana Norris in the, in the final lap of the race. Uh, he put an well, incredible lap on this 44 lap old tires, I think, um, which took the fastest lap from Lewis Hamilton. So, unfortunately, no points here. Least impressive team. Um, this is debatable, I think. Uh, definitely not Ferrari. Um, you can count off uh, Red Bull as well. McLaren, Mercedes was, could be one of the picks. Um, has definitely had a really bad weekend. A Sauber never has a good weekend, pretty much. Aston Martin had a pretty solid pace in qualifying, not quite in the race. Then we'll finish like P10 and P11, I think, or P12. Toro Rosso, um, yeah, not the greatest weekend for them either, but they kind of dropped in pace for the other teams uh, recently, so uh, we can expect them to be in the points every single weekend at this point, and they weren't even close, to be fair. Ricardo was like P12, P13, and soon P17. We have a horrible strategy, uh, it has to be mentioned. I probably would have finished ahead of Daniel Rick if it wasn't for that. 
But yeah, um, least impressive team then. Williams, Williams, Williams. Uh, despite starting on the last round of the grid, still Albon was relatively close to the points in the end. And Sargent, I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> wasn't the, wasn't the cleanest weekend for him. And uh, yeah, it wasn't the, wasn't the best weekend for Williams, but they showed great pace and pressure on qualifying with, with Alex. So I uh, wouldn't give this to them. If they make Q3, uh, I just simply cannot put Williams as the least impressive team. And Alpine, 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 uh, Gasly showed some great overtakes, some great pace throughout the entire weekend. Ocon was uh, not quite fast, but still uh, wasn't like P20. It was, it was up there in the midfield. So still Alpine was a pretty decent team. So this goes i think between mercedes and Haas, and as hmm, mercedes won the three out of the last four races but when i think about it austria wasn't like merited in terms of pace uh silverstone obviously was but i was pretty close with mclaren and Red Bull there um obviously spa was meant to be a one two but unfortunately one or got this qualified they were in a pretty high form and finishing uh well one car out of q q2 out in q2 and both of them finishing like p7 or p8 is a pretty solid pick has they haven't been on a very strong form to be fair uh after those two p6 finishes from Holkenberg, but they were nowhere this weekend uh finished p14 p15 in qualifying for a team that's that wants to challenge for for a p6 of Toro Rosso and uh, that's just not great for them. I would still give this probably to Mercedes, so um, just by a little bit, Mercedes deserves this one, and I get no points, in my opinion. Least impressive driver. Not Checo and not Fernando. Those two picks are horrible uh, when it comes to the actual reality. Uh, who would I give this to? Honestly, hmm. I have to think of a singular driver. Hmm, probably Esteban Ocon, like, or Oscar Piastri, Oscar Piastri, I, I'll probably give it to Oscar. Yeah, fit, uh, qualified third, finished P4, but simply based on the expectations I had of Oscar, I probably would give him the least impressive driver. If, if, if it came to an argument between, uh, and AGX probably would be Ocon in the end, or some other driver I'm forgetting, obviously Sergeant had a really bad weekend, but when does he have a good weekend, really? Hamilton, yeah, won two of the last four races before that and got out in Q3 and finished a P8. Not the greatest position to be in. Um, could be a pick, but still, still wasn't as bad compared to their teammate, I think, uh, as it was for Oscar compared to Lando, because Lando was simply in another league compared to Oscar in both. A competitive session, so yeah, this one probably goes to Oscar Piastri, in my opinion. Most impressive team, definitely no, not these picks. Um, same for most impressive driver, these picks are uh, not the greatest. <laughs> most impressive team, mm, uh, would I honestly give it to McLaren despite them um, not finishing a one two like they should have based on their pace? Also, Ferrari. Yeah, they only got a podium and a P5, or was it? But they pretty much nailed the entire race day. Like, this is not something Ferrari normally does. Like, perfect strategy, pretty much perfect pit stops. No, no shenanigans with anything. Like, the Ferrari was pretty much perfect in the, on, on the race day. Qualifying wasn't the greatest. Yeah, quality pace wasn't there, but the, the race execution was so un Ferrari like. I would legit give it to them over McLaren. But I probably would go to McLaren because uh, I don't think AJX would let me against the Ferrari. Um, but yeah, that's a impressive driver. This one is interesting as well. And I, it's, it, there are a couple of picks. I'll name a couple. Obviously, Lana Norris uh, needs to mention amazing line qualifying and uh, amazing pace in the race, won the race with the fastest lap and pole position. Pretty much a hat trick, uh, only didn't lead those 18 laps, or I think a couple of laps more because Oscar, than uh, pitted late. 
So yeah, um, missed like 20 to 25 laps left in order to get a Grand Slam. Very impressive weekend, but still the, that those details like at the start was the start was horrible, and I just yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just. I just have too much, too, too big of an expectation of of Lando, but I just don't, don't feel like he deserves it over drivers like Charles Leclerc. Very important to mention there. Qualified P6, um, probably doesn't look as great, but he pretty much extracted everything that was possible out of the car qualifying. Uh, as qualified Carl Sainz, fair and square, and in the race. Didn't put a foot wrong, just was was faultless with everything. As I like I said before, Ferrari nailed the entire race day, and Charles was was immense. It was just awesome on the track, held that foot for the podium, and yeah, was pretty much on pace with Max Verstappen for the entire race, which is an important important thing to mention. The other pick I would go for probably was Pierre Gasly. Great in qualifying, great in the race, pretty much the same uh, reasoning as for Charles. But uh, yeah, I think it wasn't as good of a team, so maybe this one should go to Gasly. But yeah, I would probably, if it was purely on me, I would probably give it to Pierre Gasly then. Um, I would probably have to argue with AJX over some of the picks, and you probably go for Norris. But yeah, um, he's not here this time, so it goes to Pierre Gasly. But Extra roll prediction. Uh, Carol plus DNFs in the first lap. Unfortunately, there were no DNFs in the entire race. Not a single yellow flag, to be fair. And uh, top five in, Q, in qualifying hour 0.2 seconds. That's incorrect as well. So no points there. T21 for AJX for the Dutch Grand Prix. And he now leads by six points going to the Italian Grand Prix. Last nine races, last nine races to go. Yeah, um, this is it for the Dash Grand Prix reaction. Thanks everyone who's been watching us and well, listening to me this time. <laughs> Only me. Thank you anyway. Um, yeah, see you next time. Bye.